Let us now take a look at the lookup functions hlookup and vlookup. So let's consider this following scenario where we've got a bunch of students. You've got the names of the students and you've got the scores that they obtained in some particular exam. Okay. Of course, again, I emphasize it need not be just 10 students. It could be 100 students or 1,000 students. Now, commonly, uh, what we have is a problem of assigning letter grades to the students. And the professor may have some kind of a grading policy that looks like this. Right? That is, if the student has scored 93 or above, then we give an A minus A. Between 90 and 93, we give an A minus. That is, uh, greater than or equal to 90, but less than 93 is an A minus. Between 85 and 90, B plus, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so we've got this grading policy and now the job is to apply this grading policy and identify the letter grade for each of the students. Right? So going by this, uh, the student Hong Zhao would have got a grade, the person has got a score of 89 and that falls in this range of 85 to 90 and therefore the student gets a B plus. Jane Waters, on the other hand, she scored a 93 and gets an A. Jim Smith has got an 82 and therefore gets a B because it's in the range of 80 and 85 and so on. Okay, so this is really what we are trying to do. And again, I emphasize we may not have 10 students, we may, we may have 150 students. Okay, so laboriously looking up the grading policy and assigning a grade manually to each student can be a very time consuming operation, could also be an error prone operation. We might make a mistake somewhere. Okay. So Excel has lookup functions to do this precise job, which is to say, here is a lookup table. So go look at the score and find out, according to this table, what is the grade for the score. That's effectively what the lookup functions are. In this case, we call it a VLOOKUP because our lookup table is organized vertically. Okay, of course, this is not yet technically an Excel lookup table, but this is the concept. Okay, so that's really what we want to do. So we want to write a formula in C2 to compute the grade for the student in the uh, second row, Hong Zhao, and copy that to C3 to C11. Okay, once again, like I already mentioned earlier, the computation that is being performed is exactly the same for all of the students, and therefore we should write one formula and copy it rather than writing many different formulas. Okay. So now the first job for us is to construct a proper Excel lookup table. Okay, this lookup table conveys the information we want, but it's not really an Excel lookup table because in an Excel lookup table, uh, typically you want the values to be organized in a certain way. Okay, so this table, let's first understand how this table is organized and then uh, see how it's going to be used. Okay, so this says that if a student scores between 0, which is greater than or equal to 0, and less than, strictly less than 70, then they get an F. Okay, so the first value and the second value here together define the first range. The second value and third value define the second range and so on. Therefore, a student who scores greater than or equal to 70, but strictly less than 75, gets a C plus, and so on and so on. Okay, so when we say lookup table, we don't explicitly specify the ranges here. Whereas here we explicitly specified the ranges. This is an informal table. This is not an Excel lookup table. This is the Excel lookup table. And in an Excel lookup table, we specify the ranges indirectly. And the range is determined by, e by two consecutive values. Okay, so these two, 0 and 70, determine the first range. 70 and 75 determine the second range. 75 and 80 determine the third range, third range and so on. Okay, and because of the way Excel works, the values in the lookup table, because obviously we are defining the range by two successive values, the way Excel is going to work is, let's say it takes the value 89, okay, and then it has to determine the grade for that. What it's going to do is it's going to take 89 and see, does 89 fall into the first range? No, it's not between 0 and 70. Does 89 fall in the second range? It's not between 70 and 75, no. Does 89 fall in the third range between 75 and 80? No. 
Does it fall in the fourth range 80 and 85? No. Does it fall in the fifth range 85 and 90? Yes. Okay. Therefore, the grade is B+. Plus. Okay. This is how Excel is going to work through the process. It's going to start from the top and keep going down till it finds the range into which a given value fits. And then it's going to put that as the grade. So because of the way in which Excel does this job, the values here have to be strictly in increasing order. I'm only talking about the values in the first column, not in the second column, right? So this is a very important requirement when you're constructing lookup tables. Okay, so these values have to be in increasing order when you're performing a lookup, especially of this kind. Okay, there's another kind of lookup we'll perform. We'll talk about that later, right? So here, especially when we are talking about values falling into ranges, in that case, your values have to be organized in ascending order because Excel starts looking at the top of the table and slowly works its way down till it finds the first range into which the value fits and then it puts the other value, corresponding value as the, uh, as the result. Okay, so this is precisely how lookup tables function. Once again, I really want to emphasize this is not a formal Excel lookup table. This is in our information. This is useful for humans. As far as Excel is concerned, this is a proper lookup table. So for Excel to make sense of a lookup table, you have to put it like this and not like this. Okay, let's move on. So the formula that's going to do the job for us is here. It's called VLOOKUP. It's called VLOOKUP because the table that we are using, the lookup table, is vertically organized, right, with the ranges being defined by two successive rows. So that's why this is a VLOOKUP table. If we had organized the lookup table horizontally, then it would be called HLOOKUP. Let's get into that later on. Okay, so we've got VLOOKUP, and the first argument to VLOOKUP is what is the value with which we are going to go into the lookup table? Right? Remember, the lookup table actually defines ranges, right? So 0 to 70, 70 to 75, 75 to 80. So we are given a particular value and the first job is for us to determine into which range does the value fall. Okay? So that value which we want to identify the range for, that is what is called as the lookup value. So in this case, the lookup value is B2. So that's the first argument. The second argument is the actual lookup table itself, the address of the lookup table. Okay. Now notice that this lookup table is not in a single row or a single column. It's a proper rectangular region. In fact, in this case, it's part of two columns. Right. So again, recall from our discussion of ranges that uh, you define a range by giving the address of the top left and the bottom right. right? So that's why we say $E$13, which is this cell, and $F$19, which is this cell. Okay, So that defines the entire lookup table. The final argument is what is a little tricky for you to understand. And what we are say, telling Excel is, look, take this value B2, go to the lookup table, find out in which range the value falls. Okay, So Excel will go and determine that the value actually falls in this range 85 to 90. Okay, So now that we have found the range, we need to tell Excel, okay, pick up the value from the second column of this lookup table. This is the second column of the lookup table. Pick up the corresponding value in the second column, put it into the cell. Okay, So that's why this third argument is 2. Now you may say, isn't it always going to be 2? Why do we need any other value? Why do we need to even say it? Well, it's possible that your lookup table might actually have more columns. So for example, we may have just a letter grade and maybe a textual description of the grade. So for example, here we may actually write out fail and we may write out for A, uh, excellent. For A minus, we may say good. For B plus, we may say fair. Uh, and for B, we may say satisfactory and then unsatisfactory, deeply unsatisfactory, fail. Okay, so it may be those other things. And instead of the letter grade, we may also we may want to put a grade description, right? So for the same lookup table, in some places we may put a letter grade, in some other places we may actually put up a textual grade description. 
right? So in that case, if we are using it for the textual grade description, then we won't use the second column. Instead, we'll use the third column, assuming that the textual descriptions are here in another column. And of course, your lookup table then will be these three columns. It'll not be E13 to F19. It'll in th in instead it'll be uh, E13 to G19, right? Because the lookup table will also be here. We are not getting into that right now. Most of the time when we are using it, we'll be using two. But I just want you to understand why that value two exists. Okay. So uh, of course you should by now have already noticed the fact that we made the lookup table addresses all absolute. And you can guess why. Obviously we are doing that because we have written the formula for the student in row two. And now we're not going to write additional formulas for the other students. We are simply going to copy and paste this formula, right? And when we copy and paste this formula, we don't want Excel to change the lookup table because no matter which student you're looking at, the lookup table is still right here. It hasn't moved, right? If you put a relative address for the lookup table, then here it would have become E14 to F20, E15 to F21 and so on. We don't want any of that. We want to leave it as E13 to F19. So that is why we made it absolute. Of course, we kept the lookup value as relative because as we move to additional students, we want to use B3 and B4 and B5 and so on. Okay, so this is how the lookup, uh, VLOOKUP formula works. So to summarize what's going on in the lookup table, this here we have uh, in the lookup function. So this is the name of the function VLOOKUP. The first value, as I've already explained, is the value to go into the lookup table with right, the value for which we want to find the corresponding range in the lookup table. This is the address of the lookup table itself and almost always this has to be absolute. And finally, the column number within the lookup table from which to get the result, right. So this column number is the column number within the lookup table, right. So this is the second column because this is the second column of the lookup table. Absolutely speaking, in the spreadsheet, this is not the second column. This is the fifth column, right? It's column F. It's the fifth column, but that's not what we are concerned about. Within the lookup table, this is the second column. That's what we state. So our lookup table earlier looked like this, and therefore we used, of course, it shouldn't be A minus. This should be A. Uh, so we used VLOOKUP, but we could have also organized the lookup table like this, horizontally. Right? Notice that the value 0, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 93, those are now horizontally laid out and the corresponding grades are now in the second row of the lookup table, not the second look, uh, second column of the lookup table. So in this case, we'll use the HLOOKUP function. Other than that, there's really no difference between VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. It just depends on how your lookup table is organized, whether it's vertical or horizontal. That's it. So if we were using HLOOKUP, then let's say the lookup table is right here and our formula would then look like HLOOKUP B2, it's still B2 because that's the value for, for which we want to find the grade. The table is now H13 to N14, right? It starts left, top left corner is H13, bottom right corner is N14 and of course 2 because it's now the second row of the lookup table that we are interested in. Okay, so what we did now is we provided the lookup table and then we asked Excel to go and find the range into which a value falls and so on. This kind of lookup is what is called as a range lookup, right? Because we are saying what is the range into which the value falls and then get me the corresponding value from the second or third or whatever column it is or row, right? So this kind of a lookup is called range lookup and by default when you use edge lookup or VLOOKUP, Excel does a range lookup, okay? But there may be situations in which we don't want a range lookup. Let's take a concrete example, okay? So here we have the same, uh, you know, students and the scores. I just added one more column called the state into which a student falls, okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to type in the name of a student into F3 and I want F4 to tell me to use the lookup table and find out the state of the student. Okay, so the formula that I'm going to put in here is called uh, is uh, uh, 
Okay, the formula I put in here was V lookup F3 A2 to C11 A2 to C11 comma 3. Right, 3 because state is now the, the lookup table is A2 to uh, C11 and the state is in the third column of the lookup table therefore I put 3. Right, so I said V lookup F3 A2 to C11 comma 3 and for Hong Zhao it actually worked correctly. Right, because uh, the, the, you know uh, you got the correct state. But be careful don't assume that this will always work correctly because suppose I type Ed Sullivan okay Ed Sullivan is here right and we need Ed Sullivan state to come out as Pennsylvania PA but instead the lookup function returned and said sorry I couldn't find a value right why is that because by default I told you that Excel is performing a range lookup right because that's the way it works in by default V lookup and H lookup by default do a range lookup so what it does is it says okay the first range is Hong Zhao to Jane Waters alphabetically and it goes and looks at Ed Sullivan Ed Sullivan doesn't belong to this range right and in fact Ed Sullivan doesn't belong to any of these ranges okay in fact Hong Zhao uh, is already past Ed Sullivan right E comes before H and therefore Excel says I'm not able to find a range into which this falls okay so range lookup is not a good idea for this because here we are not looking for something to fall into a range we are looking for an exact match we said go find the matching value in the first column of the lookup table and then give me the corresponding value from the third column right so we are not looking for range here at all right but by default Excel does a range lookup unless you tell it to do otherwise okay so the solution for that uh, this didn't work because range lookup is not correct in this context we want an exact match okay and uh, if the values were ordered then Excel would have found Ed Sullivan but the values are not ordered so this is not going to work okay so if you wanted to perform an exact match instead of a range lookup then you add a fourth argument and we add the fourth argument and we call it false right because by default the fourth argument is true to say yes perform a range lookup and this when you say false what you're telling Excel is I don't want a range lookup and the alternative is exact lookup so when you do that it finds the correct value for Ed Sullivan okay that's because it says I'm only going to do an exact match and for an exact match there's no need of ordering it just goes and compares value by value by value and finally it finds Ed Sullivan here and then says okay Pennsylvania okay so that's the difference between a range lookup which is the default you don't have to do anything for it but if you want exact lookup then you have to add a fourth argument and say false and then it'll do an exact lookup okay so again when you're using lookups several important things to understand first of all you have to understand that by default it's using a range lookup and if you're using a range lookup then the values need to be ordered but if you don't want a range lookup then add a fourth argument and say I want uh, just make it false which says I don't want a range lookup which means you get an exact lookup okay so when we specified the fourth argument as false everything worked properly once again just clarifying when you're using a range lookup your lookup values have to be in ascending order uh, if it's vertical V lookup then they have to be in ascending order this way if it's H lookup then the first row has to be in ascending order that's really important okay so exact match doesn't matter they can be in any order if the fourth argument is false that means we want an exact lookup exact match lookup then the order doesn't matter Okay, so if you do V lookup B2 E13 F19 comma 2 that performs a range lookup if you want uh, which is the same as saying fourth argument is true you could say that explicitly but there's no need because that is the default right so these two are equivalent you just don't have to say true but if you do want an exact lookup then you have to explicitly say false.
Let us apply what we have learnt in lookup to our profit forecasting case study. So this is what it was, our final results. Of course, I'm not showing you the assumptions and so on. So now what we want to do is to apply this rule, right? So we want to classify the profit. So I'm saying if the profit is less than 100,000, we classify the profit as low. Between 100,000 and 200,000, we classify it as medium. And uh, above 200,000, we classify it as high. Okay, so we've got the actual profit numbers. Now we want to classify the profit and say low, medium or high. So this looks like a great application for lookup tables. And therefore, I create a profit lookup table here, zero, low, right? So between zero to 100,000 is low, between 100,000 to 200,000 is medium, 200,000 and over is high. Okay, so that's really what we want. So that's the first thing we have done. We have created a lookup table. We've put it under H, uh, 15 to I 19 or I 18 H 16 to I 18 okay so the formula we are going to write is pretty obvious we're going to say here this is the classification we want to say we look up B 18 okay so B 18 is this value here we want to take this value go into the range and put the result so B18 and then dollar H dollar 16 to dollar I dollar 18 comma 2. Why? Because second column contains the result we want to put in here. Okay. So we can do that and then just copy it for all the remaining years. Everything works because we used the absolute address of the lookup table, which is fine, and we made and we kept the actual profit itself as relative. So as we move to different years. It's going to use the profit of the appropriate year, but the lookup table is still going to be the same.